All right, so welcome back. This is going to be screencast number two for chapter 10. And in section 10.2, we are going to be looking more closely at the process of cell division. Now, because there's so much information in section 10.2, we're actually going to break this one down into two separate screencasts. And so in this screencast, we're going to look at chromosomes. And so we're going to look at the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic chromosomes. And the second thing we will look at is something called the cell cycle. And again, we'll look at the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells in regards to this cycle. Now, the second screencast that we'll make for this one, or that you guys will look at, will focus primarily on mitosis. All right, so we'll look at the details that are necessary to make sure that a cell divides properly. So before we get started with our discussion on cell division, it's really important that we make sure we have a really good, solid understanding of DNA, because that DNA must be carefully divided between the two resulting daughter cells. And so in order to make sure that that happens correctly, we're going to package the DNA. And we're going to package that DNA into a structure called chromosomes. Now when looking at prokaryotic cells, you're going to notice that the DNA itself in these cells is going to be basically represented by a single circular strand of DNA. And so over here on the right, you can see an example of a prokaryotic cell, and you can see this very light blue circular strand of DNA being represented within the cell. Now there's going to be some textbooks that will actually not use the term chromosome when referring to prokaryotic cells. They will simply give you a description of their DNA, and they'll sometimes reserve this word only for eukaryotic cells. But in this case, our textbook still uses the word chromosomes even when referring to prokaryotic cells. Now remember, one of the big differences between prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells was that these types of cells do not contain nuclei. So that means that this circular strand of DNA is not going to be surrounded by a membrane. So this is not going to be considered a membrane-bound organelle. Now, one of the big differences between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cell DNA is that eukaryotic cells, because they're much larger and much more complicated, they tend to have much more DNA. Now, the DNA itself is still going to be packaged within structures called chromosomes. But because there's so much DNA, they're probably going to have multiple chromosomes. Now, when you look at the DNA in these types of cells, that DNA is going to be very closely associated with a special type of protein called a histone. And over here on the right, you can see these purplish spheres. These are going to represent the histones. And so this DNA is going to wrap itself around groups of approximately eight histones. And when that happens, we call these special groupings nucleosomes. Now, if you notice, when this DNA is associated with the histones, if it's kind of just scattered throughout the cell, in other words, the cell is not actively dividing, we're going to give it the name of chromatin. But when it becomes more organized, in other words, as these histones kind of group together and kind of coil around each other, as they become more condensed, more compact, as they form these coils and supercoils, that's when we're going to give the genetic material the name chromosomes. And if you look up here, this is going to be considered a duplicated chromosome. So this cell is actually in the process of dividing. It says usually the chromosomes you see are duplicated chromosomes with supercoiled chromatin. Now we're going to do a lab in class that's going to give you guys an opportunity to see these duplicated chromosomes. Now these chromosomes make it possible to separate the DNA precisely during cell division. Remember when we had talked about the reason for chromosomes? So we need to make sure that each daughter cell gets its representative amount of DNA. So what we need to do next is we need to look at what needs to happen before the cell actually divides. And so what we do is we refer to that as the cell cycle. And typically it involves cell growth, 
It also involves a preparation for cell division. So if there's any special parts that are necessary for the cell to divide, those are going to be produced here. Then, of course, we're eventually going to divide the cell and produce two new daughter cells. Now, in prokaryotic cells, because these are relatively simple cells, there's really not as much going on in this cell cycle as there would be in a eukaryotic cell cycle. We will get a regular pattern of growth, so the cell over here on the right will tend to grow a bit. There's going to be some DNA replication that will occur, because remember, we need to make sure each brand new daughter cell gets a copy of that DNA. Eventually, that cell is going to begin to split in two, and so typically the cytoplasm will begin to indent, and eventually that indent will meet in the middle, and when it meets in the middle, those two cells are going to separate. Now, some textbooks will give a special name to prokaryotic cell division, and they will call it binary fission. And actually, binary fission is a form of asexual reproduction, because we're taking one parent cell and producing two identical offspring. Now, the eukaryotic cell cycle is much, much more complicated because it actually involves four distinct phases. We have the G1, or the GAP1 phase. We have the S phase, or the synthesis phase. We have the G2, or the GAP2 phase. And then one of the most important parts of the cell cycle is the M phase, or what we call the mitotic phase. Now, when you look at G1, when you look at S, and you look at G2, all three of these will represent interphase for the cell. Now, GAP1 is going to be the um, particular part of the cell cycle where most of the growth of the cell is going to occur. So right here, this is going to represent GAP1. And in addition to growing, the cell is also going to synthesize or make new proteins and organelles that are necessary to make sure that that cell can survive. Now, in the S phase, this is going to be the phase where the new DNA is going to be synthesized or made. So this is going to be where the DNA is going to be duplicated. So this would indicate that the cell is getting ready to divide. Now the G2 or the GAP2 phase, this is going to be the shortest phase for some cells and it's often used to create many of the different types of organelles or cell parts that are necessary for cell division. And so this is going to be right here. So this would be the preparation for mitosis. So this is preparing the cell to go into the mitotic or the mitosis phase of the cell cycle. So that's going to be the last phase, the M phase. Now this is going to follow interphase, and it, this is going to be the place where you will actually get the production of two brand new daughter cells. And so we usually take the M phase and we divide it into two parts. The first part is going to be mitosis, so this is going to be the actual division of the nucleus, and the second part is going to be cytokinesis, and this is going to be the final division of the cytoplasm. And this is going to be the part that we're going to focus really heavily on in our second screencast. So this is going to finish up our very first screencast for section 10.2. Please make sure that you have completed the screencast notes before you come to class.